Now in this video, we'll see uh, how to select the root bridge, how we can manually select the root bridge by changing some priority values or any other parameters. But before that, I expect you to have some basic understanding on the default hierarchical campus model where you have some access level switches, which, which all connects to the distribution level switch and then all the distribution level connects to the centralized core switches and something like this. So these are default hierarchical model, which I have discussed uh, much more in detail in the previous uh, sections. Now, the first thing we'll try to understand why there is a need for manually selecting the root bridge What's the requirement. Now, if you take an example of this network, I got some AB switches. Now, assume that these switches are my 3560 distribution level switches and the remaining switches in the bottom, you can see these are my layer two switches, normal either 2950, 2960 switches. Now, when you talk about spanning tree, you know the process of spanning tree. Spanning tree is going to select the root bridge. Now, by is on the best bridge ID, which means whichever the switch is having the best bridge ID, that switch will be considered as a root bridge. Now, bridge ID again calculated based on the priority value and the MAC address. Now, and that particular root bridge will be the centralized switch from where all your traffic flows. Now, which means in my network, if I assume that there are some switches, AB, which are my layer three switches, and then there are some other layer two switches. Now, if there is one switch here, assume that there is a one switch here, which is my 1900 series switch, and this switch becomes a root bridge. What happens? So still there is, there is no possibility of loops anyway, because STP will prevent the loops by uh, putting some ports into forwarding and blocking as per the STP calculation. But if this particular switch becomes the root bridge, this will be the centralized switch from where all your traffic flows. And most likely the, all the ports going towards this side will be forwarding. And there is a possibility that your high speed switch, uh, maybe some, some of the high speed ports might go into blocking state, which means all the traffic will be going through the centralized switch. And this switch do not have enough processing capabilities, or we can say in terms of CPU wise, this switch is not good. And maybe some uh, port speed also this way, in terms of speed, processing speed, and also the port speeds, this switch is something not really good. And we never want that, right? So if you want to improvise the network performance, it's always recommended to manually select the root bridge, which means we are going to select manually. We, we are going to decide the root bridge and we always want our best switch, high speed switch or a centralized switch, maybe a 3550, 3560 switch. If I assume that I have some, some kind of switches and this is the best switch, I always want this switch to become the root bridge so that all the traffic will go from this switch, not from the 1900 series switch. So in this scenario, what I can do is I can manually change the priority value because the default default bridge ID will be selected based on the priority value first. What I can do is I can reduce the priority value of this switch somewhat lower than any other switch or the default values. That's something we can do. Now, this is the main reason of selecting the root bridge. Now, when it comes to spanning tree, if you want to optimize your spanning tree, and if you want that spanning tree to work much better than normal spanning tree, in that case, it's generally recommended to have the best switch in the network to become the root bridge. Now, how I can do that? I can simply go to that switch A and I can define something called spanning tree VLAN 1. Now, either you can say VLAN 1 or we can say VLAN hyphen 1 hyphen 4094, which means all the future VLANs for each and every VLAN you can change the priority value to zero. Now the priority value, I'm going to give the zero. And what if this particular switch goes down due to some reasons? Again, it will make the 1900 series switch become the root bridge. And that is something I really don't want. Now in those kind of scenarios, what I can do is I can manually configure the alternate backup root bridge by giving the next switch or maybe the next equivalent switch the priority value of 4096 that is something the next best value because the priority value can only have multiples of 4096 and the least value will be zero and the next least value will be 4096 so i'm going to configure the priority value of the switch a zero so that this switch a to become the root bridge or and and also what i'm saying is in case due to some reason 
if root A switch goes down, I want to ensure that the B should take over the role of root bridge and it should not go back to again 1900. And if both the switches goes down at the same time, in that case, it may fall back to 1900. But if both are working or anyone is working, uh, any one of these two switches has to take up the role of primary. Now that is one method of changing the priority value. So there's alternate method called primary secondary. Let me just come back to this one. Before that, I, I just want to have some basic uh, verification. Now for basic verification, what I'm doing is I got a small topology connected here with some of my layer two switches. So these are my three five, layer three series switches, 3560, 3560 and some of my 292950 or 60 some switches here. Now I have some connections between them as per the topology you can see there is a connection port number 20 on this side and port number 21 on, on this side. I'm not sure who is the root bridge. If I go with the default values and most likely I'll start up with switch 4. There are some names you can see switch 1, uh, switch 2, switch 3 and switch 4. I want to first the lab requirement here is the first step is I'm going to select who is a, I'm going to decide who is a root bridge. The first thing I have to do, I have to see who is a root bridge and based on the root bridge in case if due to some reason if any one of these two switches are not the root bridges I want to make my switch 4 should be the root bridge and in case if that particular switch 4 fails uh, switch 2 should take up the role of the root that is nothing but backup root. Okay. So the first thing first, let us try to figure out who is the root bridge in my network. So if I give show spanning tree on the switch four, uh, it's confirmed that this bridge is not a root bridge because there is a blocking port and also there's no message. Let me follow up this port, port number 21. So port number 21 is a switch four to switch three. So let's go to switch three. Switch three might be the root bridge, show spanning tree. Now if you try to verify here, this is not the root bridge. Now even you can verify with some command called show spanning tree root command that that really works on the switches where you can you can see the MAC address or the or the or the priority bridge ID value of the root as well. Right now this is not the root. Now let's go to the switch two and verify show spanning tree show spanning tree. Now you can see the message this bridge is the root. Now in my scenario, switch two is the default root bridge. So switch two is a root bridge. So what's next? So decided switch two is a root bridge. But in my scenario, I don't want switch two should be the root bridge because I want my high speed switch to become the root bridge. Let's say I want to make switch one as a root bridge for all the VLANs. So I'll go to switch, sorry, switch four. It's not one, it's four. I want my 3560 switch, switch four to become the root bridge. So what I can do is I can say spanning tree VLAN 124094. Now if you want this particular switch for all the VLANs to become the root bridge, we can simply give something like this. Now right now I don't have any concept of VLANs, so I'm not going to mix up that. So I'm going to say root, uh, not root. There are two options we can use. I can say priority value and I can give the priority value of any number in between 0 to 61,440. And but the condition is it should be increments of 4096. So even if I give some wrong number, still it says you cannot use this value because 4000 is not a valid entry. You can only use the multiples of 4096 and these are the allowed values. So the least value will be zero and the next list is 4096 and the next list is 8192 and so on. So let's give some four zero. I'll give some priority value of zero on the switch switch four. Now, if I give show spanning tree for VLAN one because I just have only VLAN one here. Uh, now you can see the priority value is one because the priority value I have given zero plus VLAN number, and this bridge is the root because based on the bridge ID. Now, now in my scenario, what I did, I modified this switch four to be the root bridge. Now, what happens if the switch four goes down? If this goes down, again it will fall back to the default root bridge and the switch 2 is the default root bridge. And that is something I really don't want. Now in this kind of scenarios, we can make this as a backup root bridge where I can configure the priority value of 4096 here, whereas here already we changed to 0. 
So let's go to the switch three. I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN one priority value. Now I'm going to give four zero nine six. So show spanning tree. Now this bridge is this is not the root bridge still because there is a switch four is already available. Now for verifying the backup root bridge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down all the ports interface range. You can just simply shut down both the ports because once you shut down these two ports, there is no more BPD messages comes from the root bridge. So, or you can disable just all the ports. So it's up to you again. So I'm going to use range command to verify and then I'm, I'm going to give shut down. Now, once all the ports of the switch four goes down, now switch three says I'm having a better information so it will automatically make the switch three as a root bridge that is something what we exactly want now if the switch four comes back again let's say if the switch four comes back again it has to give back the role of root again the switch four is a root and the switch three says i'm receiving a better bpdu from the switch four now the switch four is a root bridge now this is how we can manually change the root bridges by changing the priority values and it's always recommended to have uh, the best switch in the network to have a root bridge. Now that something can be done by changing the priority value to the least value that is 0 and 4096 that is one method of uh, manually setting the root bridge. Now there is alternate way we can also uh, we can also manually select the root bridge by just giving an option of primary and secondary without changing the priority values. Now remember without changing the priority values means either you have to use this option or this option. So I, I don't recommend you to use both the options because when you say primary automatically it is going to reduce uh, the default priority values 32768. It's going to reduce the priority value of something around 8192 from the default uh, root bridge priority value and then it is going to put some uh, priority value of this switch less than the default in case of primary now in case of secondary it is going to reduce the priority value of it is going to uh, subtract the priority value and then it is going to keep some priority value so so whatever the number you get here now in case of primary it's going to reduce the priority value by 8192 and in case of secondary it is going to reduce the priority value of 4096 and if you don't want to just go with some changing the priority values we can simply go with some primary secondary options so let me let, let me just quickly do this as well by removing the previous options now in my scenario again i want to make sure that switch 4 should be the primary root bridge now i'm going to remove the previous option which i configured what was that just remove this one once i remove this if i give do show spanning tree it's going to say that uh, it will take some time for convergence, you know, I'm going to remove that from both the switches. Let, let me remove that So I'm going to remove the priority value and I want the switches to go back to the fall back to the default spanning tree process and as per the default spanning tree now Let us give some time for convergence. It will take some time for convergence here Because once you change I think the switch 2 should become the root bridge that's something what I'm expecting. You can see the listening state, it's still going on. Now you can see the switch two is a root bridge now. And it's falling back to the default root bridge. In my topology, switch two is the default root bridge if you don't modify any parameters. Now I want to ensure that switch four should be the root bridge primary. And if, in, if, if that fails, the switch three should take up the role of primary. Uh, in that case, I can say spanning tree, uh, VLAN one or for all the VLANs. We can simply say instead of giving a priority we can simply say root primary and then for the switch 3 i can say spanning tree uh, vlan 1 root secondary done now once i do this if i go back to the switch 4 switch 4 you can see this bridge is a root now i can see it is reducing the priority value some some around 8192 something around for the primary from the default priority value and on the switch switch three if you verify show spanning tree uh, you can verify that the priority value is reduced to 28673 that's something it's reducing from 32768 minus 4000 4096 
So either of these options we can use to manually select the root bridge. It all depends upon your requirement or whichever you feel comfortable, you can go with that one. So when you, whenever you say primary, it's going to reduce uh, multiples of 8,000, somewhere around 8192 uh, from the default priority value. Now it's always recommended to have a manual root bridge and you always want your high, high switches, that is the high speed switch to become the root bridge so that it should be forwarding all the traffic instead of any of the low end series switch.